Harry and Meghan's new $23 million money nightmare California couple is in a very sticky situation. A private island somewhere in the Caribbean that was never very famous. If you have $23,900,000, you want to get rid of it. There are actually many ways to do it, or if you're one of the most notorious idiots in the whole world. Of course, I'm talking about Harry and Meghan, so you can also make an Instagram post announcing ahead of time that you've just finished royal life and must go to the land of the free and the home of the brave. Well, it turns out freedom in America isn't free at all. Magazines and stun guns are over 40 months old world from the TV crying after the tell all statement and memoir, podcast series, Netflix docu series, and numerous magazine and TV interviews. Harry and Meghan's total cost to fly from the UK has finally been revealed, according to figures published by the Daily Mail and Newsweek. The combined cost of Meghan and Harry's move to the US and Harry's various legal battles in London appears to be about 23 years old. Point four nine hundred zero 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 dollars And let's remember that this number is based on Harry winning in court. If he loses all these cases, the total amount could be more than $5 million. Well, maybe you can buy some of them if you think taxes and inflation will hurt you, then wait. Harry and Meghan can present their California dream as something completely normal, kids bike, walk, hike, walk the dog on the beach. But this normalcy comes at a very high price. Mail data and 2020 data. Even then, Meghan and Harry's expenses, including their mortgage, security, staff, travel clothing and food, add up to around six to seven thousand pounds a year. Zero 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 dollars. When Meghan and Harry decided to flee London in 2020, they didn't appear to be considering the financial fallout of their decision, the fact that they would have to pay their own way in life seems to have come as quite a shock to Harry, who complained to Oprah back in 20. 21 that my family literally cut me off financially. And he also said they only got short notice that they wouldn't get to keep on receiving taxpayer-funded protection. Up to that point, Charles had been shelling out more than $8 million annually to support both Meghan and Harry and the Prince and Princess of Wales families, and also the special UK police people that had provided right now Harry is taking the home UK over that security decision, but the case only covers their British security and it doesn't really matter what the outcome is. They are probably still going to have to pick up the tab for their stateside bodyguards and large people are put at just over $5 million a year. And let's not forget their mortgage payments now. I don't think Harry even knew what a mortgage was. Meghan probably should have explained it to him with some paper and a pin. In June 2020, they captured their fake Tuscan monster from a California mansion. If you've historically owned nearly twice as many toilets as royals, the mail estimates the fees will cost you around $73,000 a year. And that's a fact that must be shocking to Harry. A man who lived with his father or grandmother until the age of 35. And let's not forget that the numbers were calculated before Meghan and Harry bought their first home in 2020, and the title doesn't protect anyone from the difficulties of inflation. Recently, Richard Eden reported that their property tax, the equivalent of council tax, had risen to around $222,000 a year. And to make matters worse, they now have to worry about Harry's growing legal fees in London. He is bringing three separate claims against Fleet Street publishers over the hacking of historic phones, as well as a separate claim with the Home Office over his family's loss of official security, now. If Harry wins all the cases, according to the British lawyer Mark Stevens, at best he would spend about $3 million. Speaking to Newsweek, Stevens also said that whether Duke pursues some or all of these cases, even if he wins 100% of his costs, he will never recover. Stephen recently discussed the upcoming case with the Mirror. Stevens said he lost £200,000 a week for six weeks. Even if he wins, that's another Netflix deal, right? This is the point where many people start to pick pockets, but they all have profitable businesses, 
but they have tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars just pouring into their bank accounts. Well, the devil is in the details, and those details have never really been explained, like how much of their estimated $15 million Netflix deal is worth, have they actually received at this point. It was reported at the time that such deals between these big companies and big streamers actually come with lower annual fees. A typical value for this is between 5 million and 3 million decimal points. Then they pay out more based on their subsequent output. So far they've only made one six-part doku series for Netflix, and then there was that bizarre Live to Lead series. But anyway, it was shot in 2019, so I don't think we can really count it the only other confirmed project that they have right now with Netflix is a documentary about Harry's and Victor's games, but they have not said when it's going to be released and actually over the weekend. I read about a rumor going around that Netflix has actually decided to cut the project. I don't know if it's true, but I wouldn't be surprised. On Thursday, The Sun reported that Meghan and Harry are no longer going to appear in front of the cameras to tell stories about the palace about how sad their royal lives were, instead, insiders say their lifespan is over because there's nothing left to talk about. Well, that's true, there's not much to say. But is anyone willing to watch them, listen to them, or read what they have to say? While Taste of Africa's Delta may have overused the word empowerment, Harry and Meghan talked about charity and hugged some NGO workers, which isn't the type of thing most people would be interested in watching. We may have learned that Meghan has signed with a major agency. WME and speculations have been floating around for months that Meghan might be trying to get back into acting or blogging. Well, I think Meghan has her hands full with tons of cakes and ideas, so it looks like we're in for a treat now before Meghan's next big thing is revealed. Is that what we want to see? Maybe not, but we have to see it. It's probably good, so it looks like Meghan has it all figured out, but what about Harry? What is he going to do? Is he trying to make some money for himself? With well-paid speeches, this plan worked very well for Tony Blair and Bill Clinton. But Harry, I'm not sure that will work, because the real thing to remember here is that they were the former leaders of this organization, and Harry is just a guy who used to be in the army and then worked for his grandmother. Does anyone really want to hear him speak? I don't believe that. As far as we can see, the big question here is between the two. Can they continue to raise the required amount even if they run out of money, or decide to stop selling royalties? Meghan and Harry haven't had much success in the US either. The big news in the latest polls is that Meghan is back in clearly positive territory. Okay, but this is the first time in six months. On the other hand, King Charles, the Queen, Camilla and William, and the Prince of Wales and Catherine, Princess of Wales have a much larger population in the United States than Meghan and Harry now have. That doesn't mean Meghan and Harry are doomed in America, but they have some serious issues to deal with.